What's happening, everyone? Welcome to the show. Have we got a banger today? We got a solo banger today. Just me. Just me today. I'm gonna get some of uh some fun stuff I've been working on. I got a lot of stuff. I had to kind of switch between things. This morning has just been, I've been all over the place. Working on a project I posted about. Well, I posted a screenshot desk uh, about some wallet stuff earlier. So I'm working on that, getting ready to probably put in some new code on the GitHub this weekend that people can play with. Most people probably won't because you got to be a little bit technical to figure it out, but it's what you can do with it. It's going to be very cool. So uh, new code coming. And then I started getting in the subgraphs this morning and I don't even remember. Oh yeah. I remember why I'll tell you the story of how I got into that. Very interesting. And uh, something I hadn't got into much, but I did a deep dive this morning on that. And also more Pulse Chain update stuff, more potential Pulse X news, which is really, really cool too. So happy Friday to everyone out there. Happy Friday to you, Retrostatic. Appreciate that, man. I was going to glad. Hope you're doing well. Red Squirrel, number one. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of stuff to get into. What's up, Red Squirrel? JC Culver, who says, AZ, I don't know. Uh, come to the AI talk. I think hopefully coffee will come on with me in a couple hours and we'll talk some AI stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't, uh, don't know much. Don't haven't been studying much on that other than what me and Axis talked about, which was a great stream. You guys check that out for sure. I guess some uh, maybe tomorrow I got a clip coming out on some on some of the die stuff. It should be fun. Ted Nelson, welcome, welcome. How's it going? Crypto Truth, good to see you, man. Travis Hunter, welcome to the show, man. Welcome, welcome. All right, man. A lot of stuff to get into. Go for about forty-five minutes. This should be your valuetainment of the day, as far as on my channel, at least. I know there's a lot of good stuff uh, going on out there, but it's not the channel you come to to just uh, sit around and hear me talk about random stuff. I usually have packed full of topics and cool stuff to talk about. So let's put the topic of the day in a sense, I guess topic of the morning, the thing I woke up and saw and was very interested and thought, hey, we should talk about this thing. And that is potentially Pulse X updates that no one has been asking for. This specific one, and it's funny. Uh, so let's. So the original tweet. Uh, let's go to Hocus Pocus Five real quick. They did the original, which had some interesting uh, nuance and stuff for it here too. So the same person deployed PulseX on Pulse Chain Testnet v4 recently also forked the Pancake Swap stablecoin swap contracts. And the question is, is RH preparing something for the Pulse Chain anniversary? Got a screenshot here from Otter Scan the Block Explorer. Pretty. Interesting. So it sounds like we got some AOA related uh, wallets doing some uh, pancake swap, stable stable swap stuff. And then our friend Somi here talking about as well. Uh, again, same person deploy full sex on V4, which there could be different addresses doing different stuff. So this is that's just like a technicality. I mean, again, like if you believe, you know what you believe about the entities and and you know Richard or Pulse Chain devs or otherwise. People doing stuff on Pulse Chain who have uh, deployed stuff in the past are, uh, you know, forking and, and doing stuff with, with contracts. So this could be a hint of something interesting happening. Uh, stable swap uh, is yeah, basically I watched so many video on this early too. Copy paste current formula. Let's do ultra low fee swaps for tight spread products such as stable cords. So that was a big complaint when Pulse Chain first came out, which was there wasn't a lot of um, you know, to do to to new, use a normal dex to use the Uniswap, you know, fork or something for stable coins, the slippage is it's much different. So maybe between the assets, you don't mind so much that aren't stable coins, but to swap from one to another, you generally don't want to lose like dollars. Like you don't want to lose money in between. You, you would prefer a much lower um, uh, fee between them and a, and a way to do it, so you get less slippage and all that stuff. And that's where you, you know, we got Balancer, you got Curve, you got all these different platforms that use different formulas and different algorithms and stuff to help you swap between stables and make that easy to do for people. And, you know, they have staking and other stuff too, uh, going on with different products and stuff in the ecosystem. So having that, so what have people been using in Pulse Chain so far? Obviously, PHUX. It has been the stablecoin uh, place where there's a lot of liquidity for stablecoins. You know, much, there's been tons of examples of how it's much cheaper to swap on there versus PulseX right now. And so me asked, you know, suggest here and, and uh, what, the, what the news suggests is 
uh, Ari's preparing for an update coming soon for Pulse Chain, for Pulse X. And how, what does that even look like? I was thinking about that this morning too. What does that look like? I'm barely going to enjoy my coffee, but it's it's for the it's 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 for the best here. Um, so my first thought was this could be it doesn't need to be another product. It doesn't need need to be another launch, another product. <laughs> yeah, and we're sacrificed all this stuff. Um, it could just be a feature upgrade. I think you could do it in a way where it's an upgrade because this it's in pancake swap stuff. So. I think this could just be maybe the uh, a PulseX upgrade where the DAP is calling and using different contracts and new features. The users will look like new features on PulseX. I think that's probably the way that makes the most sense. Again, I haven't built products like this or anything. I'm just trying to think of what I know. That sounds like it makes the most sense for this. And then, I mean, we could even ask the AI to, to get some help on this stuff too, which we, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to, we're going to use some AI stuff to, to talk about some new subgraph stuff as well. Um, or it could be another product or it could be, um, yeah, something else like that. So, or it could be nothing. It could just be like a testing thing, right? This could just be testing, could not see it this year or next year or anytime. Uh, this is no product launch announcement. Like Arch has never talked about. Mm, I say that and then I think, let me go back to that, that dev list. Actually, let's do that. Let's go back to, let me see. So I did a video on this and I probably dropped it in the channel, didn't I? Or dropped it in the description, I hope. So right, Max, YouTube. Thank you for the autocorrect. Oh, <laughs> didn't even spell it correctly. My bad. I just assumed autocorrect. So if you search in the videos, new stuff. So this is a really, if you haven't seen this stream, Part one and part two is really good. So I highly recommend it. So you could see based on what RH has talked about before and we talked about, I think I put the, did I not put the link in here? Hmm. I put the link to this one on X. So this is when, you know, he was talking about setup token and pulse X and stuff. How uh, am I going to find this? Let me search my notes for a minute. Give me just a second. I should have it in my notes. Yeah. Guess you're in my mouse clicking. Apparently I use the word new a lot. <laughs> I'm just looking for mm, one second. And I take a lot of notes. Let's say that. Hmm. Getting closer. Here we go. This should be it. Oop, not this one. So put this in the chat. Kept it back for the sauce. All right, sir. We're hopefully get you some. This one feels pretty saucy. FYI, it feels pretty saucy. So uh, my question I was trying to answer was, did he talk about doing stablecoin stuff before? The only thing I remember, yeah, I don't. Let's see, I see stablecoin from my exchange I'm making. This is a list of uh, new stuff we talked about that was you know, on the list. I, I went over this like three or four times already, or, or maybe two or three times. But I'm trying to think, did he talk about doing stablecoin stuff before? So we talked, it was pancake swap fork and that eventually you know, became PulseX, right? We could assume. And then the only thing he talks about stablecoins is making a stablecoin or having, or yeah, I guess making a stablecoin for the exchange I'm making. Interesting. This kind of does lead, lead, lead into the, yeah, let the, let the theories. Yeah. There may be some other theories that come from this too, because if he's launching, 
or if pulse x does get an up okay i guess there's two different ways to look at this two different angles so if there is new features with pulse x to make yeah I, okay so two different paths i'm thinking about this you could go with the making pulse x work with stable coins really well based on the pancake swap uh, stable swap contract stuff now let's just yeah i'm about to i'm about to turn on ai too because i think this will be like it's kind of like part of my part of my process at this point what is and could it be integrated integrated into a pancake swap v2 fork on pulse chain called pulse x yeah so two different things one could this be a new feature for stable coins and two or or two could this be part of you know all the you know the the, the p stuff or you know all the all the stable coin stuff could this be like part of that kind of uh vision or otherwise or the decentralized stable coin type of thing could it be a separate project outside of pulse x has something to do with that and again there's two different threads there's if you believe in the the you know the pegging and all this stuff I, again, I'm not like an expert on this. I just talk to people about it and stuff like that. I'm not sure really what I believe. I think there's some interesting theories and stuff, but I'm not completely convinced uh, on on in either one of these. But either you believe RH is going to peg stable coins on Pulse Chain P copies, or you believe Atropa and and the like P like that that sort of version, or maybe like there's a mix of both. I'm not sure. Anyways, just to separate the two there for a second, there's two different. I mean, maybe camps or otherwise, or, or train ways of thinking. And again, there's a lot going on there. Anyways, so it could be a new feature for PulseX, one way I'm thinking, or it could fit into the narrative of pegging stable coins, regard or you know, regardless of which direction you think that happens or doesn't. So um, you don't have to believe any of this stuff happening. It's just I think it's it's just interesting to kind of like you know talk about the mechanics and stuff. Anyways, so that's the question. Perplexity.ai, one of my favorite. It's kind of like, basically uses some chat GPT engines stuff, but has a really good interface and does web searches and stuff automatically. Has some pretty good features over it. If you've been coming to AI Week and look at the trainings, you would know a lot about it. So let's see what it has to say. Probably get to chat minimally today, but I'll uh, try to get to it in a minute when we get through some of the topics here. So, pancake swap stable forms is a feature within pancake swap decks. So it allows to trade stable coins, minimal slippage, stable swap design to fit it. Okay, is it just new contracts then? Again, I'm just I'm going off information and I'm like figuring this stuff out based on previous knowledge and background stuff too. Signed to facilitate change tokens. Okay, stable coin operate simulate. Um, Optimized for assets. Yeah, we know all that stuff. And then it is technically feasible to integrate such a feature. Feature PulseX is described as pancake swap fork, pedal with V2, once a pulse chain, test net. PulseX is fork pancake swap, potentially incorporate features such as stable swap. Yeah. So that, however, the actual implementation would require through it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So basically the answer is yes. It could it could be integrated for stable coin swaps. So I'm kind of leaning towards that on this. That being said, it sounds like this could just be integrated as a new feature in the Pulse X. So I didn't want to jump the gun and be like, oh, it's totally could be this stuff going on. But I mean, that makes sense. So there could be more features coming to Luminor, things that's staking. Yeah, and this is like stable swap stuff. Yeah, stable swap implementation of curve finance on pancake swap. Yeah, so then pancake swap, like, why not Pulse X? Right. Cool stuff. So I think the, yeah, going through that rabbit hole for a second, it just sounds like could just be added to the list of potential you know, upgrades for Pulse X, single size staking, limit orders. You know, I think the only, we already have limit orders with, with Omnis and Tetra as a community product. We already have good, good stable coin order execution uh, with PHUX in the community as a community product. So we have these in the community. That's another thing I was thinking. I was like, does you know, 
how much does Richard care how much community projects we have that are already doing stuff that he wants to do for the blue chips? Is it, is he literally, obviously he acknowledges, he's acknowledged community projects before a couple of times, um, fame and I'm talking about more recently fame and, um, liquid loans, I think got acknowledged, um, in the past few months. And there's been, yeah, Maximus, the Heatron, I think slightly in different ways as well, but how much does he care about if there already are solutions to some of these things that we're missing on Pulse X? Maybe not at all. Maybe, will the products, will the community products have to start competing with the blue chip new features? Interesting thought. And the single side staking, yeah, it's, um, like I said, I'm, I've never been super interested in it, but I know a lot of people like that. So that's a thing to do with Pulse X. Party token making a comeback 2024. Yeah, that would be earn your third party token, which is a placeholder for yeah whatever uh, stuff is launching on Pulse X. Imagine this. Imagine a year from now. Imagine Pulse X has limit orders. Again, lowest common denominator, but yeah, uh, has limit orders. It has, and again, there's even if it has limit orders, limit order like uh, Dex aggregators that do limit orders are still superior as far as uh, that stuff unless pulse x implements like stuff like that too you never know that was on the list of future rh stuff actually was a there was a dex aggregator right yeah aggregator pledge one inch dot market orders limit orders so that's been on the list before been on the mind so yeah imagine we have limit orders imagine we have uh yeah the, the uh stable swap stuff in there for better order execution imagine we have single size staking where and then pro they have all these product oh Launch on PulseX. Oh, you should launch on PulseX. You know, because right now a lot of people are launching on other DEXs and and uh, ones that have a lot more yeah, features in that direction and supporting communities and stuff like that too. So it'd be interesting. Could be interesting. So that is a potential thing. We again, this is all open information. You can see it on the blockchain. Um, I think uh, I think it's pretty interesting to see the stuff rolling out. Um, and you can at least speculate and nobody really knows Richard hasn't talked about it, but, um, or I guess you can go see if he has go to hex search.io and you can go search for stable. Let's just say stable swap. <laughs> what, what just find like, he's like talking about it directly and there, everyone just forgot about it. He actually mentioned pancake swap, stable swap three, Two, two and a half years ago, everyone forgot about it. Yeah, I, I doubt it. So, yeah, I'm not gonna search, but this is, yeah, I'll put it, hexsearch.io, it's really cool for searching. It indexes uh, videos and stuff. And you can search for different stuff he's talked about and get clips to it and all that. So, perplexity.ai, highly recommend, check that out. Um, I've talked about how to use it in the AI and crypto streams I've been doing this week. This is AI Crypto Week. I'll be doing another one uh, in a couple, in about three hours, either with me or with coffee. We'll see. Doing AMA and kind of wrapping up, but I've talked about using this a lot. Really good for just, again, answers to stuff like this. Stuff that, okay, do I need to read a bunch of stuff or can I just get using my AI assistant here to do stuff too? So we're going to continue using that too, but yeah. Um, pretty cool. Perhaps new feature. You know, some people talking about it. Let's see. But let me talk to chat real quick. And we're going to move on. We got some more stuff to cover. Crypto Mance, how's it going? Ready for a next feature? As, as somebody talked about, this is Bitcoin happening year. And he said that a lot of uh, teams and stuff tend to release a lot of new features suspiciously timed in Bitcoin happening here. So I think, again, I don't know. I've, I found that I, I like this, I like this community, you know, I like crypto and I like Pulse Chain and Hex community stuff too. I found a place where I can do, you know, just good work, my own terms, no boss, opportunities to inspire, to win. And that's what this place means to me in this great day in April. And I think April in general, is going to be a great month for the ecosystem. Um, not financial advice. 
I'm just purely speculating. There's just a lot of things going on. I've talked about in the last few weeks that I think are really good. Yeah. Do not listen to me. I do not listen to Somi. I do not listen to coffee. I do, I do not listen to, I do not listen to Richard in general. Like I just dis disagree with at least the direct translation to some degree with some of his biggest tweets, some of the different things um, disagree or, you know, I think, oh, there's more nuance to that. Um, instead of listening, I consider the information that is provided. I'm extremely thankful for the wisdom. Um, but I consider their opinions, data, combine it with my own as I have it and my, my own decisions. So there's a difference between listening and consuming. And I prefer consuming. Um, if I listen to anyone, the most is probably, probably Richard or I have at least in the past, but I really, uh, I really want to change that mental model. I want to go more towards consuming. Um, and then, yeah, think, cause I feel like I have a lot of information and a lot of nuance these days to, to see, you know, some of what other people can't see or, you know, it's not that I, I don't, I don't bet against Richard, but you know, I, I don't think, uh, I think the direct translation of a lot of his tweets and stuff may not mean exactly what people take it as. So yeah, there's, there's a lot in there that, uh, I've learned to do over time, but dude has a lot of wisdom and definitely grateful, uh, to be around for this. But anyways, this place is great for that. And that's why I think I'm attracted to it a lot. Kai, do the Pulsing FX accounts? One does. Brett Tepp. We call him Brett Tepp. His name is Brett Paulson, I believe. Yeah, there's one. I think maybe there's more. I'm not sure. But this is only, this is by far the biggest public one. And yeah, so B-R-E-T-P. Okay. What's up, Armando? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Finbear, how's it going? Wait, dog. When is RH going to add the price go up feature? Hopefully this year. Coming soon to PulseX. Price go up. Can't beat it. Best in crypto. I certainly hope so. That'd be cool. What's up, Todd? Welcome, welcome. She appears. Yeah, it's Jet. Uh, this is, uh, so this morning I'm doing the, uh, crypto stream and, uh, the afternoon I actually, uh, end up swapping. I was going to have coffee. It's going to do coffee in the afternoon and go on his channel. I still haven't, I just still need to check my messages and see what we're doing. Um, but originally I had to switch some times around and stuff. So AI is actually in the afternoon, hopefully with coffee or just me. And, uh, this stream is happening this morning. Cause that was just some interesting stuff that happened this morning. Anyways, welcome, welcome SJ. Jay, everything? How's it going? All right, we're going to move on. We're going to get technical. We're going to get not boring, not in my opinion. So I was thinking, I was looking around. Put this in the chat. I've talked about this before, looking at certificate transparency and, and monitoring infrastructure and stuff like that. And after this tweet came out, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if there is, you know, if there is another service being standed up, stood up. It's like a term in infrastructure when you deploy a new service or turn on something or make it accessible publicly or otherwise. Maybe you talk about it, maybe you don't. But if you register domains or subdomains and stuff, you get certificates. There's public logs of all this stuff. So if you just go to assert, you know, I already went to, I already posted the link. If you go to srt.sh, you can type any website in there and you can see if, if they're adding new subdomains and that can give you clues to new services launching and all that stuff. So, it's actually really powerful. I've just did it so many times. I, I don't say it with much enthusiasm. So I just typed in pulsechain.com. And I was curious after I saw this, if there was, you know, if it wasn't a new feature on PulseX or if it was a service that they needed to put on PulseX, were they launching any new services uh, or otherwise? So I was looking on pulsechain.com. I was looking with PulseX. So I'll just change it to PulseX. First thing I looked was PulseX because, you know, if they, maybe they were adding something new and you can see, you know, the devs or the automation uh, has been, there's updates in March and stuff, but just probably just renewing certificates or otherwise. I don't see a lot of new uh, subdomains here. Um, just, you know, a lot of these are just stuff I've either talked about before or seen before. Uh, it's pretty cool to give you an idea of like what it's, what the back end and stuff uh, looks like here. Um, so I was looking there and I was like, okay, let me look at pulse chain, see if anything going on there. Cause maybe they, maybe it's like a, a new, if it's new service, it may be like, you know, swap dot or, you know, I don't know, stable swap dot pulse chain.com. If they're literally deploying a new service. So 
And you could see that if it's if they register a certificate. So that's why devs are careful, you know, because you can see certificates, they're probably careful to not register them until launch time. So when Pulse Chain launched, I saw them create the certificates, wait till the very last minute to create the certs for the services. I think that's how it went. Something like that. I could see like hours before we knew about it. Um, I, I can't remember. Something like that. But you can imagine something like that. They basically made it public that these services exist and were ready or or whatever. And then everything, you know, then they actually got their certificates. So you can use the subdomains to get to the service. And then there's the services themselves, which respond when you go to them, you know, DNS maps, uh, names to IP addresses, generally speaking, and the IP addresses and ports and services still need to be up for it to work and different pieces like that. But anyways, I was looking on here and, um, I was like, I was like, all right, well, I haven't checked this for a while. Let me just like scroll through and see if there's something that I maybe didn't pay attention to before or didn't see, cause I don't check it very often. And I noticed there was a couple that I didn't really think about it much before I see otter scan assets, but I think it's like a S3 bucket or something, probably hosting static content. And then there's, um, just different API stuff with pulse chain and, um, things like that. And I was scrolling through and I saw graph and I was like, huh, is that, is that subgraphs? That subgraphs and pulse chain. Honestly, I never really played with them much. Again, I'm not, I haven't been, I haven't built like these, I haven't built dApps or launched tokens and, you know, stuff like I'm not a founder of like a project, right? So a lot of this stuff is, I kind of just, I don't pay attention to it sometimes because I don't know if it, it's not important to me and what I'm doing, but it's interesting, but I just don't, you know, so much stuff going on. I just don't get into it much. So I was like, oh, it's a subgraphs. Have we had subgraphs for that long on Pulse Chain? I didn't mean like, uh, and then of course I get into it and it's obvious and like, oh, of course there's nothing new here and stuff. But I think it's interesting to even just kind of talk about what they are and how people use them. And I was searching around too. I was like, I wonder if are people talking about this on Twitter and stuff? And I came across uh, you know, this uh, uh, Trillion X Market ME tweet and it had a link to graph.pulsechain.com. I was like, wow, I never hear anyone talk about this stuff. I never hear the devs talking about it. I never hear just people talking about this stuff. Um, so just to show you before I go there, you know, if, if you're looking at the subdomains and stuff here, uh, shoot, let me find, where is the sub or graph? Come on. Oh, I'm on PulseX. Sorry, PulseChain. So graph, if you go to, uh, where's the one for pulse chain? There's one for pulse chain dot infra. Okay, well, I'm just gonna, cause I don't know which one it is. So if you just go to like graph dot uh, pulse chain dot com you can see a message, a response in JSON message. And it's like, hey, access deployed, subgraphs, deployment ID, this. And then it's basically like telling you how to use the service. But if you're not familiar, if you ever go to a website and you're not familiar with what that means, you just copy and paste into Google, for example. And there's probably some documentation that can tell you about it. So the first thing that comes up on this is uh, the graph. And it talks about deploying a subgraph. I'm like, oh, okay, this is like the graph. It's it's That's like a subgraph service thing kind of you know kind of wrap my head around this at first and then um you got stuff over here on on uh, hack.md which i think gives you like a lot of different uh how to's and tutorials on deploying stuff and talking about this stuff so you can see it's talking about subgraphs like okay so at that point i'm like all right this is probably a sub of the subgraphs here so again you go to uh, uh, start searching on twitter and found the link and I came here and I'm like, oh, cool. Like there's literally like a GraphQL instance. So GraphQL is just a way you can query the subgraph for different stuff. So um, again, I, I just never, I just never paid attention to this before. It's very important. A lot of people use it. Um, and then, yeah, let me, let me back up to like, what is, what is, let me do new thread. I can talk about like, what is subgraph? And this is like, this is how I'm trying to show you like how I learned about this stuff too, how to get up to speed really, really quickly on stuff that I, you know, having a tech background, having came across it before a little bit, I know a little bit and I could probably get the gist of it, but I can get up to speed really quickly if I use like AI tools and stuff. So like what is subgraph? 
and why I use it versus like just uh, you know RPC calls and stuff. So subgraph uh, context. Oh shoot, that's the wrong one. Oh, okay, no, it's just talking about graph is a you know. Okay, so it's talking about like actually graph theory. Um, and then computer science blockchain subgraph refers to data indexing. So basically, blockchain indexing blockchain information, organized enables efficient querying of blockchain data. So why are they useful? Again, you can developers uh, can define which data from the blockchain that should be indexed, how it should be stored. So Basically, you can you can index blockchain data, and then you can query it. And if it's public, um, you know, like the one on Pulse Chain, for example, you can uh, use it instead of using RPC calls and stuff. That's why I was trying to get a comparison. So instead of using, uh, just like okay, let me let me ask it for this like example using subgraphs as that versus without subgraphs and list advantages with subgraphs. So example without subgraphs. So what you, yeah, what you normally do is direct blockchain queries, right? So instead of, if you don't use an index service, you actually need to talk to the blockchain to get data. Uh, maybe you got to use transactions and, you know, it's, 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 uh, yeah, just read this. Like that subgraphs interact. So slower, inefficient, all that stuff, but indexes, I mean, that's what indexes are for, right? They're supposed to take data that um, get, get access to the data and then put it in a very fast place to access it and then give access to other people to use it. Instead of going directly to the source, you go to the index or the cache and there's all these different concepts and stuff to get quick access to it. So example uh, with subgraphs. So you have data index. So you can basically do queries to get access to data faster. So faster queries reduce costs. So by offloading the data index to subgraphs, uh, dApps can reduce the computational load on servers, uh, potentially lower infrastructure costs. You know, if you have to pay for the data, do transactions or otherwise, it's just a more professional way of doing it. Like it's, it's just what, you know, this is like a really good, that's why Alex from Hedron, he's talked about subgraphs. Like, oh, I think he stood up a subgraph service and like you need it, that you need these types of things in the modern era for blockchains in order for uh, devs to get access to, you know, to, uh, for the apps to be more efficient and faster, all that stuff. So bullshit chain service. Um, I was looking up ways to, um, and again, subgraphs aren't new. We've seen them around. They've been around for a while. I was like Googling for uh, Pulse Chain subgraph stuff. And I came across actually this uh, Teller teller thing where um, there's a there's an issue where they're asking for requires data subgraphs hosted by Pulse Chain. And they actually implemented it. They uh, This was back in 2022, August 2022. If you go to, yeah, if you go to issue and look at the code, this was back from, you guys remember testnet B2B? Um, you can see the code and stuff they did. So they're adding, adding pulse chain stuff. And then for liquid loans feeds, they're like, I guess working on this for, uh, you know, price Oracle stuff using subgraph data for, uh, for testing or deploying uh, price, you know, price related stuff. And the token stuff, adding the, you know, graph.b2b. So it's been around for a while. It's been on pulse chain for a while. It's just kind of like nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about subgraphs. I don't see the devs talking about it. I haven't seen any tweets or threads on it. Like some of the stuff is like, wow, it's really interesting and really useful. And everyone's using it. All the like the devs and stuff are using it, but they just, there's just no nobody talking about it. So with so with subgraphs, again, you index blockchain data um, instead of using just instead of connecting to RPC and stuff, you uh, use the subgraph to get the data. And um, I wanted to show you, so like how I, I was, I was thinking of, okay, how, I want to query. Again, I don't know much about using, I know you can use GraphQL to do queries and stuff, 
but I don't know. Uh, I want to know more about like what I can carry query. So if you go to Explorer on the side here, let me put this in the chat, by the way, real quick. So you can follow along if you want. You can see there's a bunch of different, um, yeah, a bunch of different stuff here, pairs and pair data and tokens and prices and volume and all this stuff. So how do you know how to make a query? So normally if I came across this, I'd be like, okay, let me like learn the query language. Let me figure out like, it would probably take hours to actually understand, okay, like which, like what data to actually want? What can I get? What, you know, what is the structure of the data? How can I ask for it? So there's a way to get it. I could do an introspection query where you can be like, tell me what I can do. Like, tell me like what is available here. And I already got it here. I just, I think it literally, uh, so I found this introspection query. It's pretty general. You can use it for any, any uh, GraphQL system and stuff. And if you run the query, you get a bunch of this data back and basically describing a lot of the data there and the fields and what data you can ask for. So I'm just going to copy all of that. And I'm going to go here and say, um, use the attached, you know, use the, the following data, or just say, use this data to come up with um, 10 different queries for the for the blockchain data. And this is PulseX data. I think it was the PulseX subgraph too. On PulseX. And then I'm just going to paste it in. When you paste it on, on uh, perplexity, it'll automatically like attach it as a file. It's pretty cool actually. So let's see what this comes up with. So today I hope you're learning about like infrastructure, how to use AI to do a lot of this, how to do a lot of what subgraphs are. Again, we talked about new features, pulse X stuff. I'm trying to give you an idea of infrastructure and, and how you can like see things um, that are being deployed even before they're announced, all that stuff too. All this public information, public. So if you just know how to use it, you can, you know, become more powerful, right? You can be, you can go figure a lot of this stuff out. Okay, so this has to be a question. Please provide specific data. No, I want, I want you to tell me, so skip. Sometimes it'll ask for, to be more specific, but in this, I just want you to come up with just some different queries to get stuff so I could use as, as an example. So the first one it comes up with is to fetch all pairs. Again, so I just pasted in basically the design, the doc, the information. It's basically, I just went to their design doc essentially, or the, the subgraph explanation of what's available. I copied it, I pasted it, and I asked the AI to give me, you tell me what I can get. Like, I don't even wanna do any more research. You you look at it, analyze it, and then tell me what I can, what information I can, I can get. What queries can I run to get what information? So the first one that comes up with is query to fetch all pairs with their reserves and total supply. So I just copy that. I go to subgraph, open a new tab for a query, I paste it in, and I run it. So this is querying uh, the pairs, ID, name, total supply of stuff that it knows about. I was playing with this a little bit earlier, and um, it has a lot of different tokens, but it doesn't have, I don't, I don't know, like, some of it, like I didn't see hex in here some places too. So it has all these pairs, but some of them look unfamiliar and some of them don't look like the ones I expect. But again, it, it returns like the ID. So it looks like the asset, um, the, the asset address, uh, the name of the pair. Uh, so I guess it's just, it's just the amounts. I guess the amounts that, that they're in the, in the pool or the supply. Yeah, just different stuff, different base, different stuff based on, um, information so fetch all pairs roots of service total supply okay so total volume i thought this is interesting so you can get total volume based on a certain day this is stuff devs can use for their apps or um to use different calls and stuff so let's just let's do this one in and we'll do let's see what day we'll do uh on january 6th we'll do the the day that's pulse chain supplemental day when we first started getting started on this. 
So maybe the seventh, maybe like just a little bit afterwards. Uh, not the correct date format. Hmm. It did want me to modify it, right? Hmm. It didn't give the correct date format. Okay, weird. Well, normally I would be I would pass back to the AI and be like, hey, fix this, but let's just let's move on. Let's give you a couple examples here. Um, retrieve all swaps for a particular pair, including amounts and timestamp. Yeah, this is so this is like some interesting information too. So let's do a pair ID. And the pair ID can be let's see. Actually, so for this one I would need to get I would need another pairs too. So let me ask. Does it have a list all pairs? So list all pairs. We'll do query. Query to list all pairs. So if you want a specific, do a specific thing, you can ask it because it again you fed it the information and now I can just like come up with it. Okay, so let's use this query. New tab. So these are different pairs. Yeah, we, yeah, we looked at this before. So let's just pick like, I don't know, none of these that really look that familiar. <laughs> Again, I was expecting to see like a bunch of like blue chip stuff, but let's do, let's just do die win. I have no idea what this is, but die win. We pick the ID, go back to the tab, paste it in, run the query. And now we can see the swaps. I, I assume like all the swaps. And the times, uh, see how timestamps. It's in a uh, different format. You gotta convert it to get the actual date and time and stuff. But all the swaps for a particular um, pair of and that pair was that was uh, PLS PLS win. Yeah, the PLS win. So you can see all the different data. So you can imagine the the devs and stuff using building apps and 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 all those things that we play with and in. in uh, liquid loans, power sale, like all these people, all, all the big apps, I imagine use some form of subgraphs. Instead of querying the blockchain directly, they're using the subgraphs. I'm going to speculate. Um, I, I doubt anyone, any big professional project is not using it because it's just to get cheaper and faster and they got them available. That's why the, the things get spun up and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's subgraph and that's, yeah, querying blockchain data. Again, you can um you can make your own subgraph of blockchain data i think the graph is actually you can they have like public ones let's do the graph.com yeah they're like a probably pretty big company now when they first came out it was like whoa this is pretty cool so graph explorer yeah so you can do yeah they have substream uniswap they have like uniswap data v3 arb v3 arbitrage yeah, so people can create different ones and you can, oh, V3 Arbitrum, gotcha. Yeah, so pretty cool. Anyways, I don't want to go too much into it, but I just want to explain like what subgraphs are. And again, nobody talks about this stuff. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, and why, uh, why it's important for dev stuff too. So I came across that again, you can use S uh, CRT.sh, type any domain in there. Don't be pulse chain or pulse X, be anything and see you know what is uh, what may be coming or or uh, what's available to you. you didn't know before again i didn't i never used the pulse chain subgraph stuff until i like oh it's there didn't even didn't even realize i should actually play with that maybe i'll come up with some other queries and stuff later on so that's pretty cool again um highly recommend you check out i'll drop this query in here too check out new stuff these two episodes if you want to know potentially new stuff coming up in 2024 in pulse chain from pulse chain devs and stuff i cover in depth these two different stuff that's been talked about before and tweets and stuff richard said and all that stuff too so very good uh, very informative i think those two those two uh streams all right so now you know about subgraphs and infrastructure stuff and certificates um, one other thing I want to bring up real quick, did this poll, 
I like doing these polls every once in a while because I can tag other communities. I can kind of get engaged, but I can see like what people are thinking. Again, all of them are going to be skewed towards Pulse Chain and Pulse X and Hex and all these products. But I really like, you know, I like other people seeing our numbers too and like how many people are out there voting. This one had 1,500 votes, which is pretty decent um, to get some data. So which crypto will turn 1K into 100K in 2024? I had Pulse X, Solana, Doge, and Arbitrum on here. Again, uh, a lot of my audience is, is Pulse Chain people, so Pulse X is uh, definitely going to have an advantage on that. But or there's a lot of people seeing this not even in the community and voted. Um, yeah, you know, they might have voted for Solana and Doge and Arbitrum, but majority of people think Pulse X has a chance. It's pretty interesting. So um, yeah, Solana's already went up a lot. Doge, who knows? Arbitrum they'll keep up with much, but. Pulse X, man, let's look at, should we look at prices real quick? I haven't looked at prices for a while. All time low, still looks good. 24 hours, yeah, went down for the last few days. Broke below SAC price on, on Pulse Chain. First time for a while. Pulse X looking at, ooh, 372. Wow, so it went below four on that one too. Ink under five bucks again. Hex, combined Hex still over a penny, but uh, Hex, on Pulse Chain right under Penny. Mm. Wow. We'll see. We'll see See where this month goes. See where the, the prices go this month. Staking the yield is still uh, really good on the farms right now, too. I uh, got a lot of events coming up, like I mentioned, in April. And boy, 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 is it going to be, uh, I think, April and May. There's just so much stuff going on. I'm very excited about it. Very excited indeed. I think that's about all I got going on now. Have any questions? You guys got anything else going on in the chat? Otherwise, I will call it a stream and I'll be back in about three hours to do some uh, AI and uh, crypto AMA stuff. What's up, Paul? Welcome, welcome. Wake Dog, uh, let's encrypt it. I mean, yeah, yeah, let's encrypt awesome. I mean, I, I use, I, of course, I run Go Real DeFi, so. Um, and domain, I have domains and stuff like that. And uh, Let's Encrypt is awesome with automatic renewals and stuff. It's here, Bigfoot, what's happening, man? Armando, appreciate that, appreciate that. All right, I'll wrap it up for this one and hope to see you all in a bit. Oops. And uh, that's all I got for you this morning. Sci-Vibe and 5555, five, five, five. we are out.